Hello again. This is Math 2115 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Complexity of Algorithms. As always, please be an active learner as you watch this video. Our first example is to examine the complexity of the algorithm for finding the maximum element in a finite sequence of integers, and it is shown here. So to find the maximum element listed in arbitrary order, a temporary maximum is first set equal to the initial term. And then after a comparison, i less than or equal to n has been done to determine that the end of the list has not yet been reached. The temporary maximum and second term are compared, updating the temporary maximum to the value of the second term if it is larger. This procedure is continued using two additional comparisons for each of term in the list. That is one, i less than or equal to n, to determine that, it, that you haven't reached the end, and another, max less than ai, to determine whether to replace the temporary maximum. Think through this. Because two comparisons are used for each of the second through nth uh, elements, and one more comparison is used to exit the loop when i equals n plus 1, Exactly, this is two comparisons for each of the two um, through n, and that's n minus 1, and here's the last comparison. So exactly this many comparisons. If you do the algebra, you distribute this, you get 2n minus 2 plus 1 is 2n minus 1. Comparisons are used. Now, 2n minus 1 means that the time complexity is theta of n measured in terms of the number of comparisons used. And note that this is independent of the particular input of n numbers. Let's do another uh, complexity calculation. And this time, we're going to look at the linear search algorithm that is shown here. Again, we're trying to find something. Um, uh, we're searching through here, and we're trying to see if, uh, if uh, this matches a given value of x and, and which one of these does. Also, she realizes it's possible for you not to find x amongst these. So here we go. The number of comparisons is a measure of the time complexity. At each step of the loop in the algorithm, two comparisons are performed. One, i less than or equal to n to see whether the end of the list has been reached and one checking to whether saying x is less than or equal to a sub i to compare the x with a list in the, with an item in the term finally one more comparison i less than or equal to n is made outside the loop consequently if x is equal to a i two i plus one comparisons are used the most comparisons happen to n plus 2 when, it's, when the x that you're looking for is not in the list. So in this case, two n comparisons are used to determine that it's not in the list. An additional comparison is used to exit the loop. And one comparison is uh, made outside the loop. So this time you get two n plus 2 comparisons. Hence, a linear search requires, again, theta n comparisons in the worst case. Now, the type of complexity analysis that we did here was the worst case analysis. By worst case analysis and algorithm, we mean the largest number of operations uh, needed to solve the problem for any input of specified size. Worst case analysis tells us how many operations are required to guarantee it will produce a solution or tell you there is no solution. As another example, let's uh, describe the time complexity of the binary search algorithm that we discussed previously in terms of the number of comparisons used and ignoring the time required to compute um, the m, which is the halfway mark between these, and that's a, and that's a uh, floor function that's the greatest integer less than or equal to in each iteration of the loop in the algorithm. And you might remember this is the algorithm, and this is the algorithm where you split it in half 
and then you only have to look at half of it, uh, and then you split it in half again, depending on what you're trying to um, find what, what the x is. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, for simplicity, we can assume that there are n equal 2k elements. We're assuming that this is some power of 2, and that means we can always find exactly the halfway point in a list a1 through a n, and where k is a um, non-negative integer. Now note that k is equal to, and this would be the logarithm base 2 of uh, n, and so if the number n in, not in the list is a power of 2, then the list can be considered uh, as part of a larger list with 2k plus 1 elements, and n is uh, caught in between 2k and 2k plus 1. Uh, so hence 2k plus 1 is the smallest power of um, 2 larger than uh, in. Anyway, at each stage of the algorithm, and this you have i and j, and those are the locations of the first term and the last term in the restricted list, are compared to see whether you use the restricted list or you use the other list. Now, if i is just less than j, a comparison is done just to figure out whether i is the greater than the middle term of the uh, restricted list, uh, and, and that's actually the whole list. So at each cage, uh, at each stage, the search is restricted to a list with now this is 2k minus 1, and the next team it's going to be 2k minus 2, and so on until finally you get down to 2 to the first equal 2 elements, and then finally you pick which one. So hence, uh, there are at most 2k plus 2 comparisons are required to form, perform the uh, search when you have two uh, to the k elements. And again, uh, that becomes the search. If it's not, it is at most two. And this is the, again, this is the worst case. This is the greatest integer bigger than or equal to logarithm base two of n uh, plus two. So it follows that then that uh, for a binary search, it is theta of log n. And that means theta of log n is better than the linear search that we did uh, because log n is less than n, which we found before. So the linear search uh, is a uh, worse uh, complexity than the binary search. Uh, Another important type of complexity analysis, uh, besides the worst case, is called the average case. And uh, the average number can be pretty complicated, but you can uh, uh, calculate it. And we're going to calculate it for the linear search algorithm right here. So uh, the problem we're solving then is describe the average case performance of the linear search algorithm, uh, average number of comparisons. And you assume that the integer x is in the list and it's equally likely that it's in any position. Uh, so we start. So by hypothesis, the integer x is one of the integers that we start with in the list. And again, here is the uh, algorithm that we're following. So if x is the first term in the list, uh, three comparisons are needed. One, to uh, make sure that you want to do the comparison, i is less than or equal to n. You're figuring out, do you, have you reached the end of the list? One, to check whether um, x does not equal to a, and one, uh, outside of the loop. Now, if x is the second term, there are two comparisons are needed, so there are a total of five comparisons are used. In general, if x is the ith term of the list, xi, two comparisons will be used at each of the i steps, and one outside the loop, so a total of two i plus one are needed. So this is the average. Now, there were n things there, so the average would be 3, 5, 7, and it would be 2n plus 1 if it were here. Now, that's taking all of the possibilities, but you divide by n, you can factor out the, uh, the 2, and, um, and, and you know that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus n adds up to n times n plus 1. So this expression can be simplified to n plus 2. And you should check these simplifications. But that means this is, and this is the average case, is theta of n.
Uh, we also can analyze the worst case simplicity of the sorting algorithms that we discussed, namely the bubble sort and the insertion sort. So let's do the first one. What is the worst case complexity of the bubble sort in terms of the number of comparisons made? And again, this is the bubble sort. And again, you bubble uh, the least one to the top and the lowest one to the bottom. Okay, so the bubble uh, sort uh, sequence passes through the list. During each pass, the bubble sort successively compares adjacent elements, interchanging them if necessary. When the ith pass begins, the i minus first largest elements are guaranteed to be in the correct position. During this pass, the remainder of them in minus i comparisons have to be done. Consequently, the total number of comparisons used by the bubble sort in order to list in elements is and so one time you have one, another time you have two, uh, and the worst you can have is n minus one. Now this is adding up the numbers one through n minus one. So this is going to be n minus one times n over two. And if you look at this, this is going to be n squared. And so uh, what we find out is that uh, the, the complexity then uh, is going to be um, big O or theta of uh, n squared because we have this. Here's theta of n squared. It's worst place complexity. And that was for the bubble sort. Now in comparison, let's look at the worst case complexity of the insertion sort in terms of the number of comparisons that are used. And recall, this is the insertion sort. So the insertion sort, recall, inserts the jth element into the correct a position among the first j minus one elements that have already put uh, in correct order. It does this by using a linear search, successively comparing the jth element with successive terms until a term that is greater than or equal to it is found, or it compares aj with itself and stops because aj is not less than itself. Consequently, in the worst case, j comparisons are required to insert the jth element into the correct position. Therefore, the total number of comparisons is going to be 2 plus 3 plus blah, dot, dot, down to n. And this is, um, if I did 1, 2, 3 up to n, it would be this. So this is that subtracting 1. And so what we conclude is that the worst case uh, complexity here is theta of n squared. Please make sure you understand this. Now, it turns out that both the bubble sort and insertion sort had the same worst case complexity. However, the most efficient sorting algorithms, and we might talk about this later, can sort n items in big O of n log n time. And so using, um, but so from now on, we will assume that sorting n items can be done in that, even though that's something that we will deal with in the future. Let's do a different example. Let's talk about the complexity of matrix multiplication. You remember we talked about how to multiply matrices, but basically you take the elements of the row times the elements of the column, and then you add them. So there is both multiplications and additions done. And this is the algorithm for matrix multiplication. Uh, so you uh, pick a, a column uh, and, and a row. And so you start with a zero, but what you do is you take um, um, uh, a i q times b q j uh, and then uh, what you do is you add those up and this is the adding function here and so this is matrix multiplication now we can determine the complexity of this algorithm in terms of the number of additions and the number of multiplications used so here is uh, solving that problem how many additions of integers and multiplication of integers are used with this algorithm to multiply two n by n matrices with integer entries? So there are n squared because this is an n by n matrix. And so when we multiply uh, for each entry in the product, a times b, a total of n multiplications and n minus 1 additions. Hence, a total of n cubed. You see it's n squared. Uh, so it is n. Uh, elements in, in rows or columns. So it is n squared times n minus 1 total additions are used. And so uh, what we have then is n squared times n minus 1 is the big O of n cubed. And so big O of n cubed is what we end up for the answer to this one. Now surprisingly there are more efficient algorithms for doing matrix multiplication uh, than this. And this has actually been studied a lot and uh, the notes here say that um, there are other algorithms that will do 
uh, uh, big O of n to the square root of 7 additions and multiplications. Notice that we're doing the multiplications and additions both here, not just the number of additions. Um, and we're in cube multiplications in this. Um, uh, so, so we're doing here just talking about the multiplications and additions. Now, this has actually been studied for a long time, and for a long time it was just thought to be 3. But in 1969, this guy started doing work, and he came up with an algorithm uh, that was much less than that. And there's been work going on since then. And uh, this is what the square root of 7 is. I'm just saying this has been studied a lot. This is what many theoretical computer sciences deal with uh, th these kind of problems, improving algorithms. Uh, directly applying the uh, definition gives us uh, time on the order of n cubed. Um, and that means it's uh, theta uh, n cubed. But um, uh, and, and this other node, I took this from another source, uh, has uh, algorithms that are of this um, uh, order. And these are algorithms. They're of theoretical interest, but the uh, algorithm is for a huge problem. And because of the large constraints, this really uh, is, is not practical. So you have to worry about is your algorithm practical as well as how efficient it is and how big the problem is. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. Uh, this lecture will be concluded soon. May God bless you all.